Welcome to Starfinder. We are a short-form podcast on the Into the Dungeon Network. The best way to support us and what we are doing is through word of mouth. So if you enjoy the show today, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and of course, tell your friends. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Into the Dungeon Starfinder. Um, as far as announcements, I didn't get a chance to ask. Did we have we have Azkazir next week, right? Next weekend? No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Hold on. We'll get back to you on. So. <laughs> This is week two of Starfinder, so we will uh, probably do announcements at the end of the episode, most likely. Um, Ashley will not be joining us tonight, but Rima is fine and safe on the ship with everybody still, so we'll all make that a team effort. Um, without further ado, whoever wants 50 experience points, what happened last session? I'll do it while they're Cryptus or Demi. Demi's got Demi. Demi wants that experience. Ah, just, here we go. I only had to find the thing. All right. Yeah. Well, so Demi was tasked to meet up with Rima at a bar. Uh, after they did, Rima proceeded to guide him to the ship and tell her her entire life story in excruciating detail. Um, but while that was happening, Jin, Cryptus, and Passenger continued to um, dig into information regarding the Deep, and a and Captain Jin sent him a message, a tech um, replying to um, oh, what was the name of the Crook 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 Crook? That's right replying to Crook about him missing the rendezvous. And I believe he was saying he was going to kill Wretch in the um, reply. Um, and he also asked Passenger to Photoshop, or Space Photoshop, some blood on a picture of Wretch sleeping to try and make it look convincing. Uh, let's see. They also went to try and find Crook's body, went back out to where they had been attacked, and could not find the body, and Cryptus took um, one of the drones. Two drones? I thought I only took one. Uh, took two drones um, to be repaired and retrofitted for needs of the crew, I'm sure. Um, then everyone met back at the ship and we discussed what was going to happen next, including um, payment for going to, I'm forgetting the name of the planet that we were actually at. Avalon. Avalon. To uh, help with Elu. Um, and we left for that. Um, I think that's mostly it. Is there anything that I missed? I think you was. guys brought along Wretch, and you guys have been running the new tests for your newly upgraded vessel. And uh, if I left anything out, or if Kyle left anything out, please speak now or forever hold your peace. There's a well, vital, a vital item that was left out. So, uh, Chief M Engineer's uh, note. Uh, Remo was apparently on the vacation plan and went to take a vacation, but I have since discovered that vacation plan entails living in the galley with weird chicken creatures. So, I, I'm, I think the captain was doing me a favor by not in putting me into this vacation plan. I know he always looks out for me in this way. Always. But we also uh, made it to 002, this molten world moon moon world and uh when we were scanning we saw there was a giant freighter kind of hidden nearby and we got close to it we scanned it and saw that it was full of explosives and aimed at the planet so we're like ah that's eli's plan that is what we're up against we have to uh 
get in and get out before that thing comes down. All right, so we will start off just so we just so you guys know how we're gonna do this dungeon run is we will start off until it becomes um, muscle memory that we're gonna just do it in the phases of starship combat. The first phase, like even if there's no combat going on, just to get us used to the phases of how starships work, the phases how everything's just used to the things that we can do. Um, Patrick, if you could do me a favor, if you could link everybody the Starship roles from S from the SRD real quick while I explain. Um, the way it works is there's a um, phase zero. There's four phases. Phase zero is where you get to choose what position you're in. And we decided that it's going to be rules as written. Um, you can just decide, hey, I'm going to be the science officer this round, or I'm going to be the chief mate, the captain, the pilot, you know, as long as there's no one in that position for the captain and pilot positions phase um oh shoot i'm forgetting i believe phase one is the engineering phase where i believe it's the science officer and the engineering can act then it's the helm phase where the pilot acts and i believe in another person and then the gunnery phase so um any questions so far because i'm learning this too right now and so it's a little uh it's, a, it's not muscle memory for me just yet. Yeah, it's it's a little more complicated than that in that each role has some actions that act in different phases. So like whenever you're reading whatever action you're gonna do, just go ahead and be like, all right, I'm gonna do the uh, divert power action, which is a full action in the engineering phase or whatever. Got is, it. Is one of the phases called a helm phase? Yes. Yep. Okay, H cool. I think, I think all of mine are helm phase stuff. So you would act at the same time as the pilot. So, all right. So I guess as you guys enter this cavern, we'll start with phase zero. What position are you in? I am, of course, the captain. The chief engineer, my title should speak for itself. Science, Passenger. Science officer. And Demi. Does that mean I am piloting? Demi, you can <laughs> either take the helm, because we've we've I've, I've tested you out in these uh, eight days, I'm sure. Uh, so I, I, I've got a feel for the fact that you are almost as good as, good as pilot as me. Or you can take the laser turret. And actually, I think I want you in the laser turret just to be on the safe side. See Demi climb up into the giant seat for him. Demi, and go pew! He, go and he pew, like pew, stands pew. on his tippy toes and grabs the joysticks as the seat rises into the bubble turret. He's bobbing up and down, kind of like this on it. Um, Captain Jim, um, I want you to remember that you're probably the only person here that's going to use the minor action. Um, so just. That way you can be the captain in a role and still pilot the ship. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and I'm not never gonna let Demi pilot. I've actually like that'll be very useful at some times, but for now. I actually just wasn't sure like if you are being the captain, can you also pilot? I didn't realize that, that was there is a way to do it, but you take negatives and stuff. That way you can just be the only person in like a fighter. If that's what it's really there for, but in this case, you guys can utilize those rules for uh, Captain Jin being the captain and also in the pilot seat. Gotcha. All right, so phase zero is over. That brings us to the engineering phase. Okay. So Chief Engineer Cryptus is going to divert power to the science. To science, uh, wait, what is it actually called? To science equipment. Okay. We're so learning, guys. Yes. No, I just didn't know what it was called. So one of the chief and actions that an engineer can do is diverting power. So they can divert powers to weapons, to shields, or to the science equipment, to the science officer. And for like shields, it will restore shields. For weapons, it will cause a roll of a natural one to count as a natural two instead, meaning that critical failure doesn't happen. Or you can give your science officer um, plus two to their crew actions. So we're going to divert power to science because presumably that you know we're not in combat actively. And so my engineering check is ten plus 
one to one half times your starship's tier. I think we're tier. What tier are we? We are tier three. Okay, so so I, I believe think that is a DC, if you're, DC thirteen. Yeah. Like to roll to it's me. actually it's actually probably a DC fourteen, but if you're rounding down, um, yes. So you got a natural twenty. Oh, I have, oh, I have to roll. <laughs> oh, I heard natural twenty. So I rolled a three plus four. So no, we we royally failed to divert power. But but I punch it with my percussive maintenance feet. What's that do? What does that do? It lets me re-roll an engineering action for combat. <laughs> Wonderful. So I punch uh, this engine, and we get a uh, 19 with my plus four. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the ship is more used to your the cryptus's gentle touch. So it had to get re what was that banging? It had to get reacquainted. It's, it's fine. Passenger needed some uh, needed some extra power. It's nothing. Don't ask. And so your that is it for me. Passenger, your console lights up with like you have a you have some extra juice to use if you need it on your sensors. Uh, um, just kind of smiles a little bit because he knows what that loud thud was as my panel lights up. Anybody else acting in the engineering phase? Helm phase. That is science officer and the pilot. Um, All right. Uh, I'm first going to do the captain action. Uh, encourage um i'm going to encourage um passengers scanning because i would request that passenger scans the environment around us uh encourage works in any phase it's my action for the turn it's the aid another check uh, which will grant him a plus two to his action if i succeed at my dc i can either do the same skill check that he's going to do or i can do a diplomacy dc 15 check um seeing as to how he's doing computers though i'm going to do computers as well because uh, i think i already beat the dc just with my bonuses so let me roll and see what happens natural one don't do that to him. 25. So you have plus two to your scan action. Cool, cool, cool. Did, did, did I get a bonus from Cryptus's action? Plus two, you, should, you have a plus two from mine. And go ahead and take the plus two from the computer. We'll have one more plus two that we can use this round. So basically you're getting a plus six on whatever you do, Justin. Gotcha. Passenger, excuse me. Understood. Um, well, uh, after feeling encouraged and seeing my panel light up, I will use the scan phase. Now, it says helm phase, but it says... Some of these say helm phase push. Does that matter? Push um, basically means you can't use that action if you're, if what you're using is damaged. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can still use... Like, you can't use it if it's glitched. Um, but I don't know. remember what the medium is, but then it's like wrecked is like the last one. It. it says push. You can't use it when that system is damaged. It's also riskier because some like hostile actions, like the captain's uh, intimidate. I think it was called. It, it's called something where the captain can do it to the enemy ship, and uh, the boat the 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 negative to their roll doubles if they're doing a push action. So it's 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 like a riskier kind of thing. Got it. Well, I'm mean, going to use the scan action, and it says it's a DC for this check is equal to five plus one and a half times the tier of the starship being scanned plus bonuses from countermeasures. Now, I don't believe we're scanning a starship. Is there a tier level for this station or this facility or complex? It is a pretty large tier. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Sure, certainly. Not good. It's a three plus, I think, one. Double checking. I can't help you. That's a five. It's a five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, the DC was 10, I, so I'm sorry. Does he not get the plus six that... Well, that was... Uh, that, that was for his actual action. This was just kind of a way to me to of me to give him a roll gotcha. so that the GM could give him more information to kind of help him along, but I, I can't give him information that, on that, five. Well, that's okay, but I assume you know what the DC is then based on that info. 
for me to do my computers or for me for me to do the scan. Yeah, what would you like to scan? Oh, let me see. And if I if those uh, the black boxes and the red box are like do big hangar doors. Start with scanning the red door, passenger. I want to know why it's different. Okay. It says if you succeed on this check, you learn the first unknown piece of information on the following list. So basic information is what this first scan would give me. Uh, would would get tells about uh, crew complement, ship classifications, size, speed, and maneuverability. That's for if you're scanning a um, actual vessel, but I believe for this, this you're just scanning a door. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll so just set a DC and then. All right, that's eleven. So that's seventeen. And then is it my is it a computer's check for me? Yeah, for scanning. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So seventeen plus seven. So yeah, plus seven. So eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And then plus six. All right, that was with the plus six. And then plus four because we're using advanced sensors. Uh, then twenty. You rolled a twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. That that beats the uh, twenty-five DC quite handily. Well done, everybody. Um, this door um, seems to be locked by a, uh, and it requires a specific key code. Um, and that that is a. Uh, all you can gather from it. It, is, it doesn't give you any information as far as like what's behind the door, um, but you, it has red lights. It's uh, pretty well shielded. You can. It has probably a thousand shields <laughs> just from a generator within. Well, I would relay all of that to the captain. Hmm. Okay. Now, before we move to gunnery phase, um, I would like to ask if anybody would like to do the minor action for glide. Yep, I was just about to say that. So as a, a, what a minor crew action is, it says you can take a minor crew action regardless of your current role, but only if no other action was performed this round for that role associated with the crew action. It can be performed only once per round and it does not count as your action. So it's kind of like you're acting twice-ish. Um, yeah, it's, it's mostly for if you're piloting like a single seater. Yeah. So as the glide action states, we can move at half our speed forward. Our speed is four, I believe. I think we're so we're gonna move two hexes forward and we're not going to turn and our AC and TL go up by two. I have moved you forward two hexes. Each hex is about a thousand feet, by the way. All right, I think that is all the actions that can be done on the helm phase. We are now back to, we are now to the gunnery phase. I think now might be a good time to kind of go over what we do on the gunnery phase. Um, Demi, do you have the weapons pulled up and what to roll and all that? I believe, so the only thing I can really tell here is I see under the gunners and crew, there's plus five. I'm guessing that's plus five to the rolls. Do you have the uh, gunner's um, abilities or like actions pulled up? Yeah, the uh, the link I put in the the uh, the attacking gunnery check and determining the outcome. I don't. Yeah. See actions. Um, if you, I think the link I sent has a very specific about what you can do as a gunner. Ah, uh, okay, let me pull yeah. up that one. Okay, gotcha. I didn't notice there was another link posted. Okay, yeah, fire at will, shoot, broadside, got it. And I'm going to post the um, laser net that you're on. That is the actual weapon. So um, I believe it has medium range no wait that's that's a spell never mind i jorked up the wrong thing um, yeah yeah it's a short uh, and it, it unlike other weapons it cannot shoot outside of its range increment gotcha 
so there's really nothing to shoot right now. There's the correct link for your weapon. Um, yeah, so it's five hexes, no matter what the actual range is, like even if the range is like 60 miles per hex or a thousand meters per hex, it's five hexes is your range. Um, and it's also a point defense weapon is my understanding. Tracking weapon. Yeah, I think it's something like that. There's a locked door in front of us though, isn't there? There is a red door that is locked to your left. You know it is very well shielded from weapons fire. Um, and there's a door to your front and a door to your right. On the gunnery phase. Neither of which are in range, but uh, yeah. if Demi feels so inclined, can shoot at some rocks. And the DM promises not to punish you for shooting some rocks, just to get used to shooting the gun that you're going to be shooting. Um, it's a trap. <laughs> trap. I guess. I guess can I? Can I? I was, yes, I was gonna say. Can like for f flavor or context to make this be a thing? Can there be like some debris and like in the way which I would have to shoot? Sure. You see, this is a low gravity planet, so you actually see like this rock, this big boulder, like kind of slowly falling in front of the ship as it, uh, as you guys are gliding to it and Cap you hear Captain Jin just kind of talking and you're like, ah, this guy's not paying too much attention. I'm going to blow this thing out of our way. Yeah. Captain, permission to shoot rock, shoot rock, big rock, rock, front oh, of shoot, big. Take it out, Demi. So yeah, you have plus five to that because it's counting your base attack bonus plus your dexterity modifier. Okay. That is a 22. That will hit. Um, go ahead and roll that damage. Damage to d6. Six. Awesome. It you, you hear the laser charge up and you see these big red beams of light hit it and it kind of just splits in two and goes in two different directions and falls to the uh, bottom of the cavern. I'm kind of I've been kind of imagining this laser net is kind of like it's a multi-focus, so it's like it shoots out a bunch of different beams, kind of like a laser shotgun kind of thing. I can't really figure out oh, why. I it like laser shotgun. Net. I like that. Yeah, it's you know, what's, what's the <laughs> just the the little lights that are supposed to go along along walls and stuff? Then like horror emergency lighting. No, never mind. I won't. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Never mind. Yeah, we'll just go with laser shotgun. <laughs> laser shotgun <laughs> on a ship, a giant laser shotgun. All right, so that is the end of the gunnery phase. We'll go back to phase zero. Anybody switching positions? Yes, I will switch to full pilot position. All right. Engineering phase. All right. We're going to continue diverting power to science officer. I will note, um, so percussive maintenance is a reroll once per combat. So I can't just do it over and over again for those of you wondering at home. Wondering. Well, how about for this, you can use it until we get to combat, and then you get it for that one combat. Sounds does that good. make sense? It does. And you use it at your and until we get there. Yeah, this isn't really combat right now, but... All right. So, do you well, need to... Ooh. We roll a nat one, and we're going to hit it again <laughs> for your rule just now. Fantastic. Much better. So, 20, 20, 20, you hear two. more clanging. You hear more clanging, and you did continue we, did you get to have that. <laughs> so... Uh, passenger, your console continues to be lit up with power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. So, so, all right, let's move to the helm phase. Um, seeing our captain has moved to the pilot position, I'm going to assume that he wants as much information about where we are before we proceed. So, I'll go ahead and do a scan. Yeah. Now, my understanding is that we've got the advanced sensor that does the plus four, and then we've got the those. It looks, looks like, like I've got, got a base of plus six whenever he gives me that per that percussive maintenance he's doing. I'm trying to take notes as we go here. Uh, so it's plus six and then plus my character seven for a computer's check. So um, what I'd like to do is just, I want to I see if I can focus our scanning array to 
to to perhaps give us information about the makeup of the inside of this structure uh, like if it's a a mineral composite that tends to be very stable or if it's something that could be very volatile and like collapse in on us um that and and then to see if maybe i pick up any like uh yeah we're going to just focus on on the cavern structure um i'd also be really interested if we come across something that seems man-made beyond the doors okay so that was a 12 plus 7 so that's 20, uh that's 19 uh no basic math 19 yes 19 uh so 25 total 25 total so you were trying to see what's behind the door in front of you or just where what exactly you trying to do um no i would say the focus is kind of just scanning the the, the mineral makeup of this that's cavern. right that's um, look at so the structure but at my, i think my point was is that i think the scanner might be like if i'm penetrating into the rock I feel like the scanner would probably be able to tell between something like man-made and something natural. So I'm just kind of getting an idea for how deep this complex goes and how stable it is. Um, you do you have a hard time detecting beyond this area, um, mostly because a lot of this area has like shielding against sensors. You're getting a lot of feedback, but from the area that you're currently in, you can detect a lot of non-man-made materials, like lots of just things that are naturally being made in a volatile planet, such as this, um, you know, just different types of rock and things like that. Um, traces of sakaiatite, the very, very little, I think that's how you pronounce it, sakaiatite, which is a, special very very rare material that sits at one of two different temperatures either negative 250 or 5000 degrees no in between um very very small little pebbles of that um let's see you also detect that you know you have extreme heat outside currently um you do detect some lava flows beneath you uh, some some open areas that there isn't so much shielding behind, uh, like beneath the ship, like as far as shield, shielding it, sensors and stuff like that. Passenger, what temperature does the scanner say it is outside? DM. About one fifty. What'd you say? One fifty. Uh, it looks Oof. like we're measuring at about one hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Captain, I am. That would definitely be extreme heat. Um, also, that seems like there are lava flows, and then worth noting, there seems to be less shielding below our deck. Um, you know, down below. Interesting. I'm going to move us into the cavern, passenger, and I want you to start scanning those other two doors, see if they'll open, and if there's anything different about them from the locked one. Once we do that, we'll try those codes on that locked door and see if that will get it to open. Just uh, straightforward four tiles. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Uh, does Starfinder care about orientation? Like, if you were going to start turning, yes. do you need to rotate not, the nose? Not in, like, regular combat as far as, like, personals and stuff. Um unless you're using cover but in starship combat it absolutely does which is why i didn't use the tri balloons like actual model i used a ship that i could find that could like has a point and like orient a direction does that does it look like that makes sense it on does. the screen yeah i see i see what you that, mean. that's why i did that so that yeah it, it mostly matters for the gunner and for shielding but um since the gunner's on the turret, it's really only going to matter for shielding right now. And I believe gunnery phase. Are you doing anything, Danny? He's hopping up and down in the seat. All right. <laughs> Back to phase zero. Any changes? No. So we get a chance to change every time. Yes, every at the top of every round, you get a chance to switch your seat. Nope. Um, is is there is there a um, 
so like I'm thinking Star Trek or something, right? Where the ship gets hit really hard and like half the hull's blown out and Demi gets like down to twenty five percent of his health. Can can I hop off as a player and like run and heal Demi? Like does it give us that freedom to do that? Yeah, I think it'd be more of like in the DM's hands then. Like at that point, I'd be like, okay, well, you're using an action to go heal somebody because something happened within the ship. Um, you're not going to be at your science vessel position, your, your science position right now. So you can um, kind of abandon that position if need be. Like when it comes, right, right. but you'd probably have to wait until that turn or that phase to do it. Like I wouldn't be able to just like jump into it during the piloting phase. Uh, if you're trying to do something like that, I don't think it would matter really at what phase that is because the end of every round is when damage is dealt, mm. even before ships are destroyed. So you would have phase zero just to, to say, hey, I'm going to pull off my right. position to go. Like damage is the very last thing done. Yep, I so, remember reading that. Okay, cool. Thank you for the yeah. clarification. Sorry for slowing us down. Yeah. No, it's all. This is the learning dungeon for this, for me, for you guys. So tutorial dungeon. Yep. All right. Um, I believe we're at any any changes. Hell, or excuse me, engineering. So I'm going to continue to divert power, but in case anyone's wondering at home, I could do two other actions. One is hold it together, and one is patch. But both of them are basically repairing stuff that's been damaged in combat, reducing the effect of critical damage, etc. So when we're at peaceful, a peaceful time, there's not a whole lot else to do at our level other than divert power. Yeah, we're mostly I'm, just kind of going through the motions. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. No problem. I'm going to divert power to weapons this time, just because now that I'm aware of who is shooting the gun, I'm like, huh, he might, he might royally screw up the gun. So nine, 9 plus 4 doesn't beat it, right? Because we said DC 14. Yeah. So I fail to do the power. I will smash the engine again since we're doing that. Yay, so I succeed, I succeed this time. Three rounds in a row having failed and having to hit the engine. <laughs> so We're more punching and, some, and something in his native Trox language and... Um, Demi, you, your your little console lights up with like brighter dots as you get more power to the guns. I'm paying you way and, too much. <laughs> yeah, and what that does is, again, it's just if you roll a nat one on a shot, it counts as a, a two instead because on nat ones the GM can have a uh, horrible critical failures happen, like the gun explodes. Let's avoid that. Elm phase. You want to go first, passenger? Um, Since... Sure, I'll go ahead and scan the door that's uh, d directly ahead of us. Um, oh, do well. we have? Um, we don't have any of the stuff up, like up on a view screen, right? Like we're getting all of our info from scanners. For the most part, but you do have windows you can look out, and I mean it's very far away as far as like walking is concerned, but not that far away from like the ship's point of view. I mean. You can see this massive hangar door in the distance. It's four kilometers yeah, away. Gotcha. And this door yeah. is closed. Currently closed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to scan it and see if I can figure out um, what it would take to open this door. All right. Okay. Not so bad. Not so bad. That's uh, 15 plus the two. So, from, so that's, uh, or no, plus the four from the advanced sensors. Uh, so that's 19, and then plus uh, my 7, so 16. No, 26. As you go to scan it, it actually triggers something, and like a pop-up on your screen pops up, and it and it's basically the door hailing you at your, at your station. Um, Captain, I'm being hailed by the door. I um, turn the throttle immediately to zero, and I run over to look at his console just narratively so that I can be there for the conversation. Uh, I'll answer, uh, the I'll message answer is the text only. What? And it comes up as, uh, you know, is it, uh, it asks, uh, do you want to open this door? Do we have any information about what's behind it, passenger? Did you get any of that readout? Mm-mm. Say no. 
No. The message goes away. <laughs> Pilot? I return to my seat, and I'm going to... <sighs> Let's see here. I guess I have to maneuver. I kind of uh, almost drove us into a wall. <laughs> metaphorically, but not metaphorically. <laughs> All right, so that is a piloting check, DC 15 plus one and a half times, so 15 plus four, so DC 19. This will reduce our turn rate by one so that I can move forward one in turn instead of having to move forward two in turn. So let me roll. I'm going to... It doesn't even matter, does it? Even if I took the plus two from the computer... I'm still going to take the plus two because I don't want to miss it by that much of a DC. I'm not sure if there's anything negative for missing it for that much of a DC, but uh, I rolled a 15. My target was 19. So maneuver did not work. I'm not entirely sure what happens if I fail that check. I don't think you get it. I don't think you... I just... If I remember correctly, unless it's like a stunt. No, it's just an action. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm saying, if unless you're pulling the stunts are the ones that have negatives. You're not trying to pull like this super crazy maneuver. Like the maneuver is just trying to like turn a bit better. Yeah. Uh well, I do want to start turning us. So does that mean we need to move forward two and then turn? <laughs> Alright, let's do that. Which way do you want to go? I'm gonna move you forward two. Uh, turn to the to starboard. All right, you've turned one hex corner starboard. Is there no like ruling for if we just want to sit still and maneuver and like turn? There is. Like just rotate. Yeah, it's a stunt. Is it? Yeah. There's a stunt you can do. I would really look into those because like. Starship flight in a walled area, you're going to need to use those a lot more than in just a dogfight. Gunnery phase. Oh, yeah. Didn't even take a check. Um, Demi's just going to start whistling to himself. That's it. All right. Anyone want to change positions? We'll do this probably round by round a couple more times, and then we'll release the shackles and let you guys just do it as as you call it. Engineering. All right. Uh, just a quick note. I misread what the what it does. What divert power does for the gunnery? It actually changes your damage roll from one to two. I thought it was just roll. So it's not nearly as good as I thought it was. So Cryptus, having been reminded that that's not as good as it was, is diverting power back to science. <laughs> and he has to hit the engine again. <laughs> and, okay. That thing's going to have so, so many have... dents in it. <laughs> it's, it's what he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I succeed with my reroll, so you have... Plus two, passenger, over to you, or Jin. I'm beginning to see why they said once per combat. <laughs> um, alright, helm phase. Um, I'll... Captain, I think I'm going to scan to see if I can detect life signs, um, to see if there are, um, wh what, what kind of organics we're dealing with here. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably... I'll fly as close to that or... Say again. I'm gonna fly as closer to that other door. Gotcha. So I'll I'll go ahead and uh, maybe pivot to another part of the station, uh, like my console, and kind of pull up the, the the scope for detecting biologics and uh, that 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 different uh, sort of sensor array, and uh, I'll make that check. Not good. Not good. 
not good. Let's say uh, seven plus seven. That's a total of fourteen. This was much harder because typically when you make that scan, you're in space scanning a, the surface of a planet, and you're having to just get through all the rock and all the walls and the in the interrupting shielding that's keeping the scanner from working as properly. You didn't detect anything. That seems reasonable. Where are we where are we piloting to? We are turning in place the uh, stunt, and that is the ship does not move, but can instead turn to face any direction. Uh, it has some negatives if the ship's maneuverability is uh, poor or clumsy, but we are average, so there is no negative penalty. I would like to face us. Um. Hmm. Just this way. Oh. You just you throttle all the way back and turn just a bit. Gunnery. Uh, nothing new. Passing. All right, we'll do one more round of this, and then I'll just open it up to role play how you guys role play it. Um, it'll just be basically a constant helm phase, and if engineering wants to divert power to something, that's it's whatever you guys want after this one. So we'll do one more chance to change. Engineering. Change. All right, keeping power in science, so rolling. Helm. Oh, excuse me, you have to roll. We failed, so we punch it. <laughs> five out of five. Hylax <laughs> Bupre. We, we succeed on the punch, so power successfully converted only once per combat, folks, and this is why. <laughs> All in right. the bridge, in the very front of the ship, Jin, under his breath, is like, is anyone else worried about all that banking? The ship and I have a language, passenger. It understands me, I understand it. Do not question. <laughs> Faith. <laughs> oh, God. Move us forward. Four, please, sir. Same exact thing. Would you like to open this door? I want to try the codes that uh, Eli gave Dimmy first, see if we can open that locked door. If that doesn't work, we will go through door number one. I think we... Yeah, yeah you usually get into play. Yeah. Passenger, do you think you can try and hack into the uh, controls in that door like you did Crook's PCU? You want to add you see that um sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you you see this uh area right here this is like a massive like several kilometer wide gate and you can see that's, it's like a steel ish gate it's really thick and there's like a um like a small cavern that also moves up like it, it goes straight for a little bit and then goes straight up you could fly up it but you have to get past the gate Let's not break anything yet if we don't have to. Don't open the door yet, passenger. All right, I'm going to take off the constant going running through the phases. I think we're good on that. So just fly yeah. as needed. Do what you guys need to do as needed until we find actual combat. All right. Uh, if you would rotate us towards this facing, please. We need to make rolls for piloting and things like that and scanning and all that. Yeah. 
I just turned us in place to be facing back towards that. Um, I'd still like to try it. Let's broadcast the codes. Demi. Oh, did you write them down, passenger? Do we need Demi? Yeah, I'll, I'll open it up and uh, send the same transponder sequence that we used to get in to that door. I assume the ship's logs would have it. Um, you get no signal back, and the door you entered this cavern through does not open. Does not give the same it's open signal to tell you to fly through. Interesting. All right. I'm going to bring us around to that door that uh, we were facing when we came in. I want you to tell it to open, passenger. Demi, get ready in case anything comes out. All right. I'll go ahead and initiate uh, with that door and uh, hit yes when the prompt comes up. All right. So the massive door. I can't use both hands. The massive door begins to open. Um, and suddenly your senses are able to detect things in there. It's detecting, you know, kilometers wide. Um, the bottom of it is, um, you know, the very bottom of this area is just magma, just flowing magma. It's flowing downward. Um, and it detects some other small vessels. One second. Alrighty. Um, now we're in combat. Um, as soon as the door opens, you, you detect a projectile flies straight through um, and hits into a wall. We will now enter combat. What the devil? And... Demi do a roll to see if he recognizes the projectile or to discern yes, what kind is... of what yes. kind of attack it was. Yes, um, since you actually are on the ball turret and you can actually just see it um, from kilometers away, you might be able to know. Go ahead. What does a soldier have that they can roll? This was going to be a part of that homebrew thing I wanted to do, where like right. so could hear or like see around and like just kind of have a check to see if they know it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there is something that you can do, but I'll let you do just a straight intelligence check to find out. Okay, intelligence. So, and I'm just adding my, the, on the character sheet, I'm adding the total score to, or wait, no, uh, modifier. There it is. Yeah, just use your modifier plus your roll for this. Gotcha. That is a negative one. <laughs> Good luck. That is a seven. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like a big round whizzing by. That's all it looks like. Mm-hmm. Do we hear an explosion or anything? Like, is it, does it yep. detonate? Oh, yeah, it hits the wall, and there's a big plume of, like, ash and, and like, dust from hitting the uh, cavern wall. It's phase zero. Anybody want to change positions? Uh, yes, I'm going to change the captain position. All right. Engineering. I'm going to divert powers to weapons, but I only get one percussive maintenance now for those watching. Yep, you can't, or listening. He can't do it every round anymore. This is one combat. At 20. So. <laughs> I like speed praise. <laughs> I like speed uh, praise. Power diverted to weapons, so on your damage rolls, Demi, you get a 2 instead of a 1. Not as good as what it was before, I thought. A little bit of safety, though. All yeah. right. Um, they won't do anything for this, but now that we're on the helm phase, let's do... Um, yeah, helm phase. If uh, you guys decide how you want to do it, if you want to do piloting first or piloting second. Uh, well, I'm actually, I'm going to take a captain action, and 
I want to do a taunt a a taunt action. Um, and I'm gonna ask passenger to scan these guys and figure out what's going on here. But the taunt action is the any phase. It is a push action. You can use the communication system to broadcast a taunting message to the enemy vessel. Um, I'm also gonna glide us forward. And so turn. you're broadcasting a message. Yes, 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 yes. And it's a you select an enemy vessel and a phase of combat. I'm gonna select the uh, helm phase, and I'm going to attempt a bluff check. DC equals fifteen plus one and a half times the enemy starship's tier. And you don't need to tell me. I'll just tell you what my role is. Uh, if I'm successful, the enemy ship takes a negative two penalty to all of their checks for 1d4 rounds. Uh, I guess only in that phase? It doesn't specify that part. But gross. That's what I would like to do. I'm going to roll my bluff check. 18. All right. Since you're broadcasting this message, um, you do succeed. Um, I don't know which ship you chose. Uh, so as we glide forward, um, which is well, take us. You have, you have to glide last. No, excuse In me. Yes, you'll, you'll be first. You'll be first. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, we'll be first because we rolled zero because I'm not the pilot. Um, so it'll right. be that one that's right in front, red there. And I'll be it just the bluff message would be like, hey, whoa, whoa, we're friendly or whatever. All right, so you move forward two and then right one. Uh, move forward, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. All right, um, you hear a response, but it's not coming from the sh the ship. You hear, wait, a message from within. The, the facility. What in the hell? And then it cuts out. Passing uh, the these things. What's going on here? Did we get ready? Now we will have a. Um, now that now they will move. This one is going to turn around. This one is also going to turn. This one will back off. Do a back off. This one will flip around. Oh, come on now. Work with me. And this one is just going to... Let's see. What's their speed? One second. I'm new at this. Don't judge me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he will sit right there. <laughs> And that's it for piloting. Do we have anything the science officer wants to do? Yeah, so this one that's pulled up alongside of us, I'll go ahead and use the scan um, uh, feature um, and try and get some basic information off of them. So DC is equal to five plus one and a half time the tier of the starship level plus any bonuses. Um, my roll is good, is 17. Um, I have your bonus, don't I, Cryptus? You do not. Oh, I don't. Okay, so um, it is 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, um, 23 total. Take plus two from yep. the computer. Yep, 23. And what was the DC you had to beat? Uh, five plus one and a half times the tier of the starship that we're scanning, plus any bonuses from defensive countermeasures it might have. Oh yeah, yeah you, blow out, you blow this out of the water. So okay, here, so I, I get. To I'm going to private through. message you the whole thing because you beat it by enough fives. Okay. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, it's increments of five. You get more and more. Yeah, and, more. and you 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 got it by at least three. I think you get everything. So yeah, send me the stuff. I send you the stuff in a private message so that you can role play the information if you want. And. Uh, just FYI, you notice the the dots, like three of them have red dots and two have green dots because they're different ships. Got it, got it. Um, what do they look like, if you don't mind? Um, these ones are like small little, like tube, like tube ships. Like they don't really seem to have any, they're like a big, like submarine looking thing with like jets on the sides and they have a few turrets. Um, 
the green ones, as you look down at it, you are kind of like this triangular, like almost diamond shaped thing. And they have these big mining claws sticking out of them for like digging in. Um, <laughs> That's the thing I wanted. <laughs> Captain, um, these, these are that? relatively small craft. Um, Look like they're probably single seater. They are fe- they are outfitted with auto destruct features, um, and coil guns. Any idea how that auto def- destruct sequence works? <laughs> uh, not a clue. Oh boy, I better back us off then. Uh, they're also fast, super mobile. They got a speed of eight. Only 20 hit points, though. Really weak hull. <laughs> They're just flying bombs, it sounds like. Cryptus pipes in. Timmy! Alright. Um, gunnery phase, I believe. Timmy's gonna go... Captain should... Should go pew or no pew? Shoot it! Go pew! <laughs> Roll, buddy. Ew! That's a nine. <laughs> he scored an at 20. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, you got a nine total? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, it had a, it, it was a four plus the five. Yeah, yeah, it's a don't you don't beat the AC, but that thing its little turret turns and fires its coil gun straight at the. Let's see, I think it's gonna hit it can hit either your aft or your your forward or your um port side, so it's gonna hit your forward. Yeah, it can choose. Yeah. It can choose, and it will choose. I don't like that. <laughs> it will deal nine damage to your forward shield, so that breaks the forward shield and does four points of damage to our ablative armor. Oof! Off to a good start. Is that what we're calling this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Patrick, are you going to keep track of that on the ship's thing? Or is that not update? Oh, that doesn't update in real time. Damn. All right. I'm just going to have to trust that you're doing it right. Yep. All right. I believe that is the end of round one. So uh, anybody want to change position? I'm going to switch to pilot for sure. All right. Engineering. So what type of ship core do we have? This rule is a little wonky, but I'm going to try and make it straightforward for everybody. Uh, Pulse gray power core, 100 pieces. Okay, so five. So basically, when I can divert power to the engine, the shields to restore some of our shields, it is five percent of our core's PCU. So five, if I succeed. All right. We do not, and I don't think I'm going to burn the com- percussive maintenance on this because it's not a huge amount of shields that's restored. All right. Helm phase. Do you want to do pilots first or science officer first? Uh, passenger, get on the gravity uh, generator. We're going to need you to slow these guys down just to be on the safe side. Yeah, so you're, it's a science officer action, but you act during the gunnery phase. Add your ranks in computers plus your intelligence modifier to fire the gravity generator. And as pilot, I'm going to back us off. Uh, let's see, what would be the better? Flip and burn, DC's 19. Eh. 
back off is only DC 14. Okay, I'm going to do the back off stunt. Um, so piloting check right. DC 14. 23. All right, so the, the side engines flip around and you guys all feel a little jolt towards that direction as you back off. How far do you go? Half our speed. The two? Yeah. You have backed off successfully. In passenger, you're acting on gunnery phase, correct? Unless you... Yeah. We will now go to the gunnery phase. No, excuse me. Oh, um, do we need to roll initiative? Wait to see... Elm phase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I acted um, pellet. <laughs> Oops, my bad. We'll get used to this eventually. I rolled a 23. I mean, you've already moved. Unless you want to undo that and do something else. Um. Yeah, I'll, un I'll undo that. So where does it go? All right, so you have 23. The one right in front of you rolls an 8. So it will go before you. The first green 21. It'll go before you. The second green one will go before you. They will all go before you. Kyle is sending me messages, and it is uh, pretty close, is all I have to say. <laughs> That's right. I need a tractor beam to be smacking these guys into the walls. <laughs> all right. That is their position for now. Oh, excuse me. Hold on. They are going to do a little bit more movement. All right, that is their final location. Okay. Uh, so instead of the back off, because now I'm seeing the benefit of acting uh, after them. So what are you going to do? I will do the... I'll do the turn in place because I want to face us. I want to do a full 180. Just like, and that doesn't like I want to have no. So one of the engines like goes backwards, the other comes forward, and they just, just spin. So you just 180 full. Yeah. All right. Gunnery phase. I believe only two of them are in range to actually hit you. The first one will be the one that's uh, that you're facing, and the second one will be the one that's that's behind you at this point. The one behind you uh, critically fails and hits the hits the the rocks next to it, blowing rock into it, taking some damage. I won't show you. I'll I won't show you how much damage, but it's taking some damage. And the first one will hit, but first we need. To you're gonna to fire. You're gonna to fire. Did passengers say if they had shields or not? Um, the ones he scanned did not. They do not have shields. I think the, the only one that's actually in range is the one that's still in the tunnel. Because I only have a range of four. Should be five. Yeah, you can hit this guy. What's, range of five. What's the, okay, it is five. The range gotcha. on the gravity generator just says short. What does that mean? That means five. That's Short is five, medium is ten, and long is twenty. Easy gotcha. enough. Okay. I'll uh, uh, I'll gravity I'll gravity generator the one behind us if you want to get the one in front of us. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay, you can go first. There we go. That's a twenty-three. Yeah, hit. Roll some damage as he will as well. Eight. 
and he will deal 10. Um, I believe that has to be... Yeah, that has to be forward. <laughs> your, your forward, your forward uh, stuff there. Um, so I think that's going to damage your hole a bit, isn't it? Yep. And so we did two points. We had six points of a blade of armor, so we take four hole points. Well, don't I need to do my attack as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, what does that gun actually do? Uh, gravity well module, which includes gravity generators, gravity well generators, and interdiction arrays, manipulate the gravitational forces around a targeted starship, slowing the starship considerably until the end of the next piloting phase, the target speed is halved, and its maneuverability becomes one step worse. Uh, like from clump, uh, like, uh, yeah, one step worse. That was worded funny. A gravity well module requires tremendous energy to operate. It cannot be activated unless an engineer succeeds at a divert crew action to divert power to the weapon that round. I don't think we did that. No. I don't think we did that. So I will instead just do... Wait, didn't you divert power to weapons? No, he was going to do it to shields. Yeah, he, oh. fa he failed at diverting it to shields. Mm, crap. Um, would we be okay with me just doing a science action as if it had happened on the in the helm phase? Yeah, sure. Okay, give me one second. I know what I was going to do before that order came through. Um, I will attempt to... Uh, let's see here. If you succeed, the Starship's gunner is getting a plus two bonus to the gunnery check. Um... Well, that's what I would have done, but we've already done our gunnery. Um, it's a bit meta, but would it be okay if I just scanned one of the green ones? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Lessons learned. Um, yeah, I'll just do a scan on the green ones, see what we learn. They're in range. Natural <laughs> 20. So I get okay, some baby. crit actions on this. Nice. Uh, let's see here. I mean, we're using the Starship Operator Manual rule set, right? All right, cool. So I, I guess I'm going to get all the info on that scan because that was a 28. With, yeah, that was 28 on the scan. Um, crit starship action. So I can activate ECM or rapid jam. I can balance. I can improve countermeasures. I can do insidious electronics. I can lock on. Recall beacon. That's a teleportation thing. I don't think we can do that. Scan, we just did that, or we can target a system. So, how about uh, your powerful countermeasures send false signals to the enemy targeting systems? Gunners aboard the targeting ships take a negative two penalty. No, we'll do the balance. While rebalancing the shields, you discover latent power. Oh, do you have to be balancing the shields to do that? The science officer doesn't have a rebalance. It says while rebalancing the shields. You have a balance option balance home phase. Do you I? can balance the shields, moving no, power. No, all around. I've got is... Oh, I sure do have a balance. Oh, well, boo. Okay. Oh, uh, what can I do? What can I do? We already did our attack, so none of the attack ones make sense. Um, well, you got all the information. That is true. Um, Where did you find the info about the crit effects? Uh, in the book. Ah, I see. Uh, sorry, I know that's not really a good answer. <laughs> it's in the, the ship. Justin <laughs> strikes again. <laughs> uh, I, it, it's kind of a missed opportunity at this point. There really isn't anything that can be done that makes any sense. I'll go ahead and let you rebalance shields for that at 20. All right, cool. So we'll just rebalance the shields. Um how do you want to balance them? See, before redistributing the shield points, you increase the total shield points by 5% of the starship's PCU. So it's the, it's the thing that Cryptus was going to do. So it would be five points um, that can be redistributed. Um, it's basically saying you can move it from one area to another, right? No, it says you increase the... It says while rebalancing the shields, you discover latent power in the shield systems. Before redistributing the shield points, you increase the total shield points by 5%. Um, since I didn't take the balance shield action, why don't we just put those five points somewhere? It would be basically the same as what Cryptus was trying to do. All right, where do you want to put them? Uh, forward's what got jacked up, right? 
Yep. yep. Yeah, we'll put them forward. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll get it right next Jin. Time. Captain Jin sees this blue hue sweep over in front of him. <laughs> and also, oh. did you send me the info? Yes, yeah, you should have oh, it on okay. Discord. Those are just miners. They're very low. Uh, their hulls are very vulnerable. They do have a they have a light hacksaw arm that deals some damage. Um, yeah, those things look nasty. I didn't want to get hit by them. They have shields at the front. That's it. All right. Anybody okay. want to change positions? Nope. Engineering phase. No. Right, since the shields have whooped back to life, I'm going to divert power to the weapons. Roll. That one, I'm going to progressive maintenance that. There we go. <laughs> That's when you want to use it. <laughs> oh, 16, so I successfully divert power to weapons after punching the engine. You hear a loud scream come from engineering. A very angry scream. <laughs> and it works. Helm phase. Um, All right. Let's let's do piloting checks first. Yes. Twenty-eight. They actually can't even beat you, even with their modifier. So I'm not even gonna roll. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then I guess I'll wait on them. Um. But if Justin wanted to do something more, uh, I'm I'm gonna lock on and give our gunner a plus two bonus. Oh, thank you. Melee means the hex next to you, right? Yep, they're one hex away at this point. Just go full out Lost Star. We need arms. We need giant robot arms. Passenger, what'd you tell me the speed was on those miners? Uh, full. Four? Four. Okay. That's a lie. Eight. <laughs> Eight was the fast guys. The... They're both eight. Oh, okay. Both eight, but the, the miners are very, very weak. Like, potentially... Um, they, they have strong shields at the front, but if you hit them from any other side, they're, you could probably alpha strike them. Okie dokie. All right, that is their final position. Um, I'll do a lock-on on the, the, uh, the, the, the red one that's flying towards the, the right of the map. All right, I'm going to attempt. Oh, I'm sorry, Justin. See, let's see here. DC equals five and a half times the tier of the target ship. Seventeen uh, on the a natural seventeen, and then plus six, so eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah, that's absolutely going to hit. What was the DC you had to hit? It was like 15 it was plus? Like, no, it was like five, it's five plus one and a half the tier of the target ship and then uh, defensive count and then plus anything from defensive count. Yeah, one, uh, half of is like an eighth of a tier. Like these are one fourth tiers gotcha. ships. Um, so um, I'll shout on comms back to Demi. Is there, any, is, there, ship. is there anything saying that you get more bonuses for every five above? Okay, cool. Nope, just that's a, fine. Just a plus two bonus to the gunner. So you got a lock on. Yep. Are you locked on the right one or the left one? Right one. Right, right red. Okay. Oh, uh, I meant to do this. It's a bit of flavor, but it also kind of helped with confusion. Um, at the start, Jen definitely would have labeled each of the contacts as uh, hostile one, two, three, four, and five. Is there any way you can mark them? on this, on roll 20, like, I don't know, one... Uh, not maybe really. Maybe different symbols. I can give them different symbols, though. Yeah. Excellent. 
Okay, I'm going to attempt a evasion piloting trick. Piloting trick. Um, and I, I, it's it's a bit on the fly to hit you with this, but I need you to make a ruling. I love on the fly. For operatives, um, I took a operative specialization or operative exploit called Uncanny Pilot. It specifically states when you attack while driving a vehicle, you blah, 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 blah. Then it says when you're in a chase, you gain a plus two bonus to skill checks you attempt when taking the evade or trick pilot actions. Does that mean I can do that while flying a ship or does it have to be while driving a vehicle since it starts off talking about when you're driving a vehicle? I'm fine with you using it. Okay, so it's going to give me a plus two to this. All right, evade. My DC is 10 plus one and a half your starship, so DC 14. I succeed with flying colors, 26. Very nice, very nice. All right, and so what does evade game. do? Yeah, so it's going to give us a plus two uh, bonus to both our armor class and target lock. And I want to move us forward to this hex, turn this facing, and move us forward to this hex, turn this facing. Right behind him. Given the me it's kill position. Check. Yeah. All right, it's time for gunnery phase. All right, so you're gonna have to be fired at by two guns. AC All right, so the first one will be the one that you're chasing. It flips its gun around and fires, and um, you kind of dip the ship down and avoid the coil gun shot. And the other one, um, you detect a large explosion coming from the ship. It seems that it can't fire correctly twice in a row now. Um, it seems to be malfunctioning. You'll have to scan it to see what the malfunction is. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Which um which which symbol is that one that had the malfunction? Uh, the sleepy one is the one that seems to have the malfunction. Okay, the skull it. and crossbones is the one that you uh, and it, that uh, it. passenger or not passenger Captain Jen dodged you out of. Cool. Demi, twenty three, twenty three will hit. Roll for damage. Whoop! Hey, that is a nine. Nine. Nice. You get a nice, good kill shot right on the back of it. Boom. You see, like, the side of it explode. Um, you can definitely just, like, since you're this close, just from, like, visual, just by looking at it, you know you've damaged um, a system pretty badly. Its engines start to flicker. Uh, it's it's struggling to, to move at this point. And that brings us back... That brings us back to round zero. Anybody want to change position? Nope. All right. Engineering. So, Cryptus is conscious of the fact that he has punched this engine a lot. <laughs> and is going to choose to not take any engineering action. The logic behind this is that uh, there's nothing particularly urgent and my uh, roles have been terrible. So, I would like to avoid a nat one for no good reason. Helm. Go ahead and roll, Captain Jen, if you keep rolling high. If you get if you get above a twenty-three, basically they can't outroll you. Twelve. Twelve. Oh, maybe they can. That was skull and crossbones. That was sleepy. That was heart, so he goes after you. No, excuse me before you that was the zero symbol and now for snail man all right so snail and the heart symbol go before you Eight. 
All right, now you go. All right, um, I'm going to do the flyby stunt. The ship moves as normal, but it can move through a hex occupied by an enemy starship without provoking the free attack. And during the gunnery phase, we can select one arc of our starship's weapons to fire at the enemy. Uh, yeah, duh, that makes sense. As if it was in close range, which it is, against any quadrant of the enemy ship. So preferably, Demi would shoot it in the back. Um, my piloting check DC is 15 plus one and a half years. So, uh, oh, it's DC 15 plus one and a half the tier of the enemy starship this time basically 15 <laughs> yeah because it's a one fourth and a half of that is one eighth i'm gonna take a plus two to computer one of the plus two to computers and so that'll leave one other plus two for either passenger or demi to use 26 so uh, we do that all right so where do you end up okay so let's go forward to turn this way. Oh, no, not that way. Uh, chess rules. This is hard. Yeah, turn this way. Do I have to move all four? No. You can throttle down and just move where you move. As long as I think the only restriction is you're turning. Okay. Then just one forward. All right. And I'm gonna yell to the passenger already. Did you already do your thing? I'm gonna yell to you, passenger. Open the door in front of us. We got to get out of here. All right. Skull and crossbones will remain the same. This one. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. I'll stay there because I can't pass through. One. And this one, sleepy one, actually has a really bad malfunction and then like explodes on one side and jettisons straight into the wall, destroying itself. We get the XP. Oh. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. No, it wasn't. It, this thing has rolled literally three nat ones. Ooh. It rolled another one that was off screen. I was just like, oh, this thing's broken so all right uh i think that brings us to oh we still got our science officer yep and so as we're approaching this door i'll um uh, i'll uh, i'll uh, use an action to uh, to interact with it again and when that pop-up comes up i'll hit yes to open it it opens up um you can easily detect behind it that other little black line is a gate except it's going a cavern going straight down um blocked off by that gate and you that green little dot is actually you actually can use the uh visual sensors like basically you zoom in on it and you see like this big like, looks like glass but it's like a heavy like heavy duty cut type uh alloy that's see-through and there's like a window there and it's looking into like this kind of dimly lit room and then there's an airlock door that you can like park the ship next to and like dock with it hmm. Hmm. okay that's it for my go gunnery phase Demi will continue to fire at crossbones Crossbones. All right. So they will continue to fire at you. Another nat one. I'm rolling so many nat ones today. Snail Boy is going to roll the nat one. I know the feeling. I mean... <laughs> um, the actual... For, for the snail one, a rock falls and it shoots the rock, blowing it up and it's like right at point blank range and it takes a bunch of debris. Um, crossbones rolls an 18. Does that hit? Uh, it's right on the money? Uh, yeah. yeah, that hits. We didn't do the evade this time, so it's not right on All the Alright, I think it's going to be able to hit your aft shields. It's going to do 10 damage to your aft shields. 
Gross. Demi. I rolled an 11. Hit. To hit. Um, I feel like there's things you're not using here. Um, what did that... You guys targeted this guy. Is, right. that, is that still going? Is target still going? Or that last round? Didn't you get something from the flyby? The flyby... Uh, you do have a plus two from the computer. Um, oh, okay. Why? Then that... That's not 13 then. 13 would hit it, hit the AC right on the dot if you're using the ship's computer to boost your roll. So I assume you do. Yes. <laughs> All right, roll for damage. C7. C7 damage? It has exactly seven health remaining. So you, uh, you turn, you fire your laser shotgun at almost 2,000 meters, and it just shreds it. You see bits of debris go off to the sides. It's a low-gravity planet, so it kind of slowly floats to the, to the, to the ground. Um, yeah, that's the end of the gunnery phase. Um, did you account for the uh, damage there, Patrick? I did. It took half of our aft ablative. Gotcha. All right. That brings us back to engineering, unless anybody wants to switch positions. So I'm going to do shields this time and pray for not a nat one. Yay, 19 plus four. So this means we, we do the shield action, so we divert power to shields. Now, what this actually says is it takes the five shield points and spreads it evenly across the quadrants that need it, but I think only aft needs it, so. I think you should be able to spread it wherever you want, but that's just me. Uh, but I, I written to... and your DM both say just gonna go straight to the aft, right? Yep. So. All right. Shields go up. Helm phase. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Just do what you can, passenger. Like, you can hear Jen's kind of, like, straining as he's, like, trying to, like, keep us from hitting the wall because he's about to do another stunt. Right. Uh, the slide stunt. The starship moves up to its speed in the direction of either the forward port or forward starboard. Uh, we're gonna be doing forward port because I don't wanna hit a wall. Without changing your facing, must succeed a piloting check of DC 14. Uh, if we fail this check, the ship moves forward up to half its speed I can't make any turns since they're giving me the up to word. I don't know if I would move, but let me make my check. All right. I think this that's basically you're going across the hex line like this. Um, yeah. Yeah, that seems good. Space drifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I got a 23, so I succeeded. Nice. I was about to throw on that. You're actually in an atmosphere. I'm going to put two, plus two on that DC, but it doesn't matter. You did it anyway. Yeah, so we're actually going to go forward four. It's like Take this. The door. One, two. You sure you want to go four? That's three. Oh, four would land you right where you need to dock. Oh, I thought we were here. Wouldn't that be four? Oh, that's three spaces. It has to count. Oh, I see what it counts. I'm yeah, sorry, I I'm think confused. It, yeah, 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 one, yeah. two, three. It's I fine. see what it happens. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so I slide us in, and uh, hopefully Passenger will be able to coolly slam the door on these miners. All right. So, so well, you kind of gave them, like, you kind of took zero because I was kind of hoping you'd roll to see what your piloting check was to see where they'd go. Um, so they're going to go now. Um, how about this? I know what Pat or Justin's going to do, so go ahead and roll, Justin. Okay. Eighteen uh, plus six. 
So 19, 21, 22, 23, 24. Plus six. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think they'll be able to get through. Actually, um, let's do this. So you, your DC, Patrick, go ahead and roll a piloting, piloting check for me right quick. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to rule who gets through and if anyone gets through. 21. One? Okay. Um, Patrick, or Captain Jen, you're able to get everyone through. Um, passenger, you're able to get the door to slam like with a with a proper, I guess, would you use computers check? Uh, yeah. So the door slams and you actually stop seeing this area. Scanning stops. Hold on, I need to... Hide. But um, you do he hear and see the door kind of shake from something slamming into it. Um, and uh, whenever it opens again, you'll probably uh, see what that's all about. And we'll end Nicely combat there. Gone. Passenger. Captain, do you think we should um, disable the mechanisms that open that door? Like, uh, do you want Demi to take a shot at it? I was say, is there a panel no. that Demi sees? <laughs> you do not see no, a no, no, panel. No, 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 nothing like that. But you do see, like, open the other one. Like, where there'd be, like, a service thing to go do, but there's not, like, a panel. It's not, like, a personal door. Right. No, let's, uh, not yet. I don't think they can get through it. They hadn't opened the other one. We weren't exactly quiet about our approach. So I don't think they can get through that door, but Demi, keep an eye on it. That door opens, start blasting. I'm going to take us down to that landing pad. And I kind of, like, gently... Will do, Captain. I'll keep on the pew. <laughs> so, um... I'm assuming you'll take as many turns as you need to, like, turn the ship properly and dock. Safely. Yeah. Dock. Like, Absolutely. turn in place, slowly move, turn in place, slowly move, type, type of thing. Like, you take multiple turns. And then um, I'll, I'll turn us so we're, like, facing uh, up when we're landing. Well, it's not necessarily something you land. Um, it's actually just, like, an airlock door open to the area. Like, you have to either get out of your ship to go through that door or like have a two, you know have a docking clamp hit it you know it's not like somewhere the ship lands necessarily oh gotcha gotcha uh okay then yeah we're still gonna need to face this way so we can kind of like face one of the uh ventral cargo actually i'm gonna face us this way and back us up so we can open the aft cargo bay door all right all right everyone to ops let's that was crazy. That was... They... Jeez, they burned right through the ablative. And he's, like, looking out the front. Cryptus, how are we back there? Everything's still working, right? Yeah, she she wanted to give out on us one or, once or twice, Captain, but I, I showed her. <laughs> mm. Andrew, what do you think we're dealing with here? Um... I don't know. I thought this was a rescue mission. I didn't think we'd get shot at on sight. That's probably automated defense drones. They didn't seem overly smart. Uh, can I make like a um, piloting check to kind of gauge how they were flying if they were flying very uh, drone-like? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> 11 <laughs> well it doesn't take I much can on that can I think about it take 10 and get a 19 um I would just you're not high enough for me to tell you but I will um, it was high enough for me to give passenger a gentle reminder of the last line that I no 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 I, I'm I'm well as y'all were talking I was flipping back over to see if I could see anything um it doesn't say it on the the security ships, but it does say the mining ships were automated. It should say that on the security ships as well. They're both automated. Okay. So that explains why we were attacked on site. 
Who knows when these things were programmed or who left them here? Passenger, did the check the comms? I think it logged an incoming message. I heard something, some chatter that wasn't us. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'll check the ship's log. What was that message that came through? Uh, that, if, yeah, you, you recorded the audio. It was basically you heard someone say, "The message is coming from within the sh in the facility," and then it cuts. Because you guys had broadcast a signal, or at least Captain Jin had broadcast a signal, and you got yeah. Results. Should we try it again? Uh, I, don't, I don't think they're friendly, Captain. They they could have been the ones to activate, or it could have been Roko. We don't know enough to take any further risks like that. But. I'll open a comm and be like, Rima, how is Wretch and Elu? Is everything going okay up there? And I assume... I Elu, she, she basically tells you, Elu is basically in the just as bad of a condition as she was before. And uh, as far as I know, Wretch is still in the room. Um, okay. Captain, there's a ship outside of this planet that's going to careen into this place and blow it all to hell. Why don't we broadcast a message letting this Roku know that and tell him to get on our ship and just leave? We don't know enough, passenger. I think we have some answers. If Eli intercepts that message, he might advance his plans. Yeah, and so as he says that, I quickly pull up my data pad and I'm going to do some calculations based on the time that we were told time frame we were given the corrected time frame the amount of time it took to get here and the amount of time it took to fly into the tunnel everything i'd like to make a countdown for exactly how much time left we have before his deadline if i recall correctly you had about two days from when you got here and then you went to go scan i'll say that scan probably took you two hours you guys came down here it took you about another hour to do all this i would say you have 45 hours remaining Okay. All right, so I send that to everyone. Like, I start the countdown, I send that to everyone. It's like, this is our mission clock. When that says five hours, we're flying out of here regardless of what's going on. So that's how much time we have. We have 40 hours to do whatever needs to be done. Uh, we might not be getting much sleep in these next 40 hours, but I think we'll get some answers inside this facility. It looks like we can get inside. Um, Passenger Encryptus, I want you to put your spacesuits on. We don't, I don't want you burning alive. And I want you two to try to go in there and see if it's safe. Demi, stay on the gun. Keep an eye on that door. Um, sure, now, yes, sir. Does the spacesuit go in addition to my second skin? Uh, no. It would have to reduce your armor class. Okay, I can handle that. Uh, if he goes to put, if he goes to change out, um, I would like to go to the sensors and scan whatever's behind this window into this airlock, if I can make a scanning check. Yeah, go ahead. Computers check. 30. Ooh, very good. Um, you detect a lot of computer equipment. Um, it, from what you kind of get, like a nice rudimentary map of it. Um, it's kind of just like a single room, a lar pretty large room. Uh, let me... Let me give you the actual dimensions. I think it's about uh, 110 by a, roughly about 110 by 110. Um, the airlock goes down a long hallway and then turns to a door and then enters the long room or the large room. Uh, like I said, lots of computer equipment. It seems like there's two levels. The, the level below is very, very small. Um, you could probably detect a few crates in there and two um, unknowns. You know, like the, the system is like, I can't really, it doesn't understand what it's seeing in there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what temperature does it say it's, uh, is inside the... A crisp 68. What about getting into the airlock? That's the 150 sill? Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. now the spacesuit, as I put it on, does it have everything it needs to survive that kind of harsh environment? Yeah, it, it reduces basically the it reduces those things up to a limit. the limit could be like five hundred degrees or whatever. But basically, yeah. Okay, we're just not letting it get out of hand. Got it. It's meant to survive most harsh environments. All right, well, I'm not done. I'm suited up. up comes and tell them, uh, take your armor with you once you get inside. Looks like there's an airlock. I'm sending you the map of what I just scanned. Um, there's climate control inside. Um, and there's also two unknowns, so be careful in there. Captain, I'm going to keep the space suit on. The second second skin doesn't make me that much more protected, and if we lose life support, I think I'd rather have the the environmental protection. Sounds good. What about you, Cryptus? A passenger knows best on such things. I'll keep the suit on. Besides, I'm here for my bulk and chitin will protect me. Very good. All right. Well, I'll start making my way downtown, making my way to the, um, to, uh, exit the ship and head towards that airlock. All right. Um, basically you, uh, are you guys going out your own airlock or how are you doing this? Uh, I assume we're going out the aft, uh, cargo. The, yeah. All right. Are you extending anything to reach that? Are you parked right up against it? Are you jumping? I would have parked us as close as possible. You, you I imagine we're like hovering. Dark, you had mentioned like a docking ring. Like I assume we're connected. Is what I would uh, assume. You have to use a docking ring if you had one. Oh, um, so basically, what this is going to be set up as is like you're basically walked out to the end of your ship, and you know how like on a boat you're kind of having to step over the water to get on the boat. This is kind of the same thing. Cool. Um, you're close enough to to manage the the um, the panel on the side. Um, just you know, don't do anything dumb. Got it. Okay, I'll go over so, and. Uh... Does it feel like we have gravity in this space, by the way? It is a low-gravity environment. Like, right now, you're still on your ship, technically. Mm -hmm. As far as the rules are concerned, I'm not going to get too nitty-gritty with it. But once you get into the airlock, you'll be um, in low gravity. Okay. I'll go ahead and make the transition from ship to to uh, to platform. And make my way over to the door. All right. So... Before you get to the door, passenger, you would have seen Cryptus is obviously with you. He's in his space suit. He also has a spear on his back, a tactical spear made for poking other people's spacesuits. But he has his reaction cannon up and aimed, and he just calms you briefly. You know the rules, passenger. I go in first. You open the door. Yeah, and uh, passenger's got his um, semi-automatic um, projectile pistol and he's also got a uh, um, not quite a spear just a staff uh, on his back um, and he's got his comm unit or not his comm unit his personal uh, personal computer out kind of doing the whole tricorder scanny bit as we go so I've got kind of an active scan up looking to so do you have are you going to open the door just let me know when you're opening the door Cryptus you'll take point I'll get the door open um, is there like a panel computer system how do, how do I operate yep. this thing yep it's, it's very self-explanatory, just a little panel. Um, doesn't even require a code, just open and close, and it, it tells you whether or not the inside is pressurized. Okay, I'll use the self-explanatory uh, um, instructions and get us in. All right. Do you guys have a token you want to use? Mm -hmm. I made my token. You said you do have a token? fairly certain. Oh, I have a token too. Oh, well, it's not a very good token, but I have a token. <laughs> token is on the board. Alright, so are we way back here? Is this where we came in? Yeah, you came in from the left side. Sorry, I'm getting a uh, token for myself as well. For a thing. Alright, so I forgot to put here. Um, alrighty. So, you guys are here. This is what you see. It's a long, nice hallway. Um, it is, 
as soon as you close the airlock behind you, you feel a gush of wind, and it's nice and cool. There is a door does, right here. Does this look run down? Does this, does this look bright and fancy? Is it lights it's on, lights off? A little dusty. Lights are on at the moment. It's not, like, super well kept, but it's not, like, gross and run down. Okay. Well, I'll... um. Uh, we'll assume uh, taking kind of a slow pace, but I'll stay behind Cryptus and keep scanning as we go. As discussed many, many sessions ago, Cryptus has a very complicated battle battle sign language he is taught to, to Passenger, Rima, and Jin. And so he turns to Passenger and does the complicated symbol of putting his finger to his mouth on his EVA suit, of course. It's, it's four arms, Creed, so you need you need another set of arms. Oh, um, speaking of, do we, do we have atmosphere in here? Like, is it breathable? Yes. Yes. I'll, I'll hit my Buzz Lightyear button so that my face shield pops open, since it's uh, safely breathable. Also, I'm pretty sure you've just jumped out into the void of space before. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm an android. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just Androids can melting. Do that, can't we? That's why you were Pastor's like, oh, God, I don't have air. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. the struggles of being an android, you know. I will start right. advancing down the hallway at a pretty brisk pace. My gun is up, and I'm looking for targets. All right, so you get to the hallway. This door is closed. And there's a panel next to it. Um, This other corner here has nothing in it, right? Uh, no, it's just empty space just right there. Um, you actually do see like a uh, spacesuit that looks like it's made of flame retardant material. But that's about it. I position myself at the door and I ping back to the captain. Entryway has been entered. We have encountered another door proceeding through. Oh, Crypt, kind of wish can you hold on to the... the I want to take, before we go forward, I want to look at this this flame retardant uh, spacesuit. Um... Uh, yeah, can I do like an investigation check on it? Sure. You don't. I don't think you have investigation, but you can do a little uh, engineering check if you'd like. Okay, that's a six plus seven. That's um, twelve. No, thirteen. 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 Um, you inspect it, and as you inspect it, you find that it has a thermal regulator within it as it's like upgrade what that does you can apply it to your armor it reduces the severity of the heat down by i think two so is is that what's making this are is that what's making the spacesuit flame retardant is it's got that thermal regulator in it mm -hmm. got Very it much. so and we could put that in our own spacesuit yes. or armor or armor if you want it got it um i'll grab it and add it to my inventory all right, Cryptus, let's go. Just as you say that, someone is hailing the tribe bloom. I answer the hail. What are you doing? This is Captain Jin of the courageous Trigave Bloom. I just got attacked. I'm on a peaceful mission. Who am I speaking with? I don't know how you found me, but this is Dr. Rocco. I'm here on a very important mission, and I'd rather not be disturbed for your own sake. Rocco, you are just the man we're looking for. Actually, you are the peaceful mission. Um, we have a lot to discuss. Is there any way we can meet face to face? I'm afraid it's quite urgent. Life or death? Oh, everything's life or death, but I'm afraid we can't. I am coming close to the end of my work, and I really need to stay focused on it for the next little while. I, it would be best if you guys just left. I will open the door. Doctor, you are going to die if you don't speak with us. I am going to die not one day. I do not want you here. What I am doing is the most important thing for all kids. The greatest good is being done here. 
Well, I to haven't... Be, would to damn myself. Whether or not I need to die here, or whether or not I would leave to go continue my work elsewhere, I must stay dedicated to my work. Period. I, uh, I respond... I have an android here that is in critical condition. I've been told you were the only one who can help them. That's how we're here. It'll oh. only take a few hours of your time. Oh, so you're just here for an android? It, the, the, their brain has been removed. I've been told that you're someone who can help us uh, put them back together. Like, I've been told you're the expert. That was the life or death I've been talking about. Ah, well... Unfortunately, I'm kind of busy at the moment, but if you can find my, my, uh, oh, what is it? The, the replication room. You can have a, uh, body replicated around your little android friend, if you'd like. Uh, how do we do that, Doctor? I mean, I don't know this facility. I oh, I mean, there is. Got it automated, I could probably find it, but I, but I really would rather you just leave. Look, Doctor, we're here, and there are some hostile vessels outside this door I'm looking at that I can't leave right yes, now. Yes, you just mining facility. My mining vessels were trying to get enough material for my project. The basilisk demands it. Leave, or I will activate all security systems. Look, you just said we and can go to the replicating the room. I open the camps. All right, guys. Roko is hostile. He's the one activating the mining drones, sending them against us, and he's threatening to activate more security measures. But I think I can bluff our way. He mentioned that there's a replicator room we might be able to use to get Elu a body. I'm going to play up that angle as much as possible, but this is going to get hairy. Captain, do you want me to see if I can slow him down? Yeah, whatever you think you can do. If there's like a mainframe access or anything that you can start locking them out of the systems, for sure. Cryptus, let's see what we can find. And uh, then I called Dimmy, and I'm like, all right, give it another five minutes. If you don't see anything come through that door, suit up in case they need us. Yes, sir. And actually kind of on that note, I would have I would have asked... Um, Captain, um, if they're talking about turning on more security systems, we might benefit from having Demi with us. No offense, Cryptus, but if it's as hairy as it was out there. Demi, shoot. Demi shoots good. I'd like to have him by our side. <laughs> All right, Demi. You have my, my permission to go join them. Uh, I'll stay on the ship for a little while longer. I can, I can man the guns. Understood. You know, go down as go, <laughs> go down from the turret. Better footsteps. And uh, put on a spacesuit and grab his equipment. Then uh, take the same route. Um, I don't know if I have a token. I don't think I do. Just did. Uh, Find a raptor. Uh, continue on. I'll, I'll get a token here in a moment. Okay. All right. So as Demi starts to make his way down, um, what are you guys doing, Cryptus and Passenger? I'd say let's pr proceed. Cryptus gives his complicated battle sign of a thumbs up to Passenger. All right, what are you doing? There's a door here. It is like a big mechanical door with a pad next to it. I'll go over to the pad and see if I can open it. Press the button, it goes beep. Herp. Like a negative, like like we're locked down? Herp. Okay, I'll try to hack it. Do I see a panel I can get into? Uh, you can that key rip it open off. and start doing that. Okay, I'll rip it open and start doing that. Herp. Herp. Well, that's not so bad. That's an 18. 18 plus 7, so 25-ish. Oh, right. So, do you open the door? Yeah, if I'm able to get access, I would. As 
as the door opens, um, I need one second. Well, well, the door flies open, and oh gosh, where is it? You hear a loud thud, 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 and a loud boom as an automatic rifle and another, like, heavier rifle open fire immediately at you. Okay. Alright, this first roll is against Cryptus. Second roll was against um, Passenger. Yeah, and this, and that would be like thud, thud. The, the rhythmic fire was against both of you. And the heavy, loud thud is against uh, Cryptus. Would I have cover where I am? Uh, yes, I think that's... Oh, let me pull up the cover rule. While we're getting some rules pulled up, I will go ahead and mention that when this podcast gets put up, there will be music and sound effects from tabletopaudio.com. Also want to point out that some of our recording today is going to be a little weird, so if you've noticed some inconsistencies when you're listening back to this on the podcast, we had a recording malfunction about midway through, so apologize for that. Creed, you're going to have to put a token down for me. I apparently don't have the ability to I will find a raptor but you guys see the two enemies shooting at you I see one enemy oh there's the other one got it got it got it got it yeah so before I put that hold on let me get this hand get him put in I'm so ready for the change we're gonna make in the next couple of weeks <laughs> yeah navigating an interface shouldn't be this difficult <laughs> Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm over here like mm, I can't, I can't do anything. <laughs> can't you just draw some squiggles and move the squiggles around? Sure. Can't you just drop a square? Like you should be able to do something like that. It's like drop a shape or something. I have dropped a tiny, apparently pink square. There we go. We're good to go. All right, give me one sec. One day we'll be back in person. One day, and then I can use the miniatures I have <laughs> for all of this. Almost there, waiting for it to load. Almost there, waiting for it to load. All right, Kyle, I got you put down. Uh, you'll have to use your pointer to, like, you know how to do the measurements. Just like point, uh, uh, like Patrick was doing. It should be like the circle with like the ruler looking like a comb thing. Got it at the top left there. Yeah. You're gonna roll for initiative before because you're you're showing up to the party late. So, um, does the first two rolls that eight and thirteen does that hit anybody? I assume the eight does. The eight not. misses. So the eight oh, would right. hit, the eight would hit. Oh no! Excuse me. The the thirteen would hit me. But uh, you should but have I'm, at least cover. So. cover. so you have plus two to AC, plus your dex modifier. So that, does the 13 hit you? Uh, yes. So the 13 still hits. That is... Let's see. You take six damage as a rail shot lands into you. And Cryptus does the 26 oh, yeah. hit. Oh, that does hit. Takes 17 damage as a heavy round slams into your chest. 22 points of stamina, baby. <laughs> so, so it doesn't doesn't actually hit your health yet. Nope, just just kind of wins me. 
Yeah, you go. Oh, you're gonna have a nasty bruise later. All right, roll uh, initiative. So buddy. I was standing at this door with my gun up. Do I get a shot back at them during this round? All as it's called the reaction cannon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, plus one to this, so likelihood. Nope. <laughs> the, hit, the, hit the engine. I shoot the ceiling. Yeah, you're, you're you're really put off by that heavy round and slamming right into your chest. All right, roll for initiative, everybody, including you, Captain. All right, what we got? I am an eight. All right, anyone else? Uh, no one else roll? 15. All right. I'm trying to find, is there any bonuses to, or how do we do the bonus to for initiative or anything, or is it just flat roll? Dex mod. Okay, dex modifier. Okay. Dex mod. Gotcha. Uh, it is a 15. <laughs> And I got a 19. So it's going to go... It's definitely going to go Captain Jen. And then it's going to go... Um, who got the 15? I mean, it was either Passenger or Demi. What was your score? Demi got a 15. Passenger? Uh, I had a 15 as well. Hmm. Sorry. Let's Thanks, see. Shop Goblin, for the subscribe. Then it's going to go, um, let's see, 13 was rifle. And then it's going to go Cryptus. And then it's going to go Real Guy. All right. Captain Jin, you are up. You are currently not here Correct. in the fight. However, as I understand, you're on the gun. Um. I was just kind of standing in ops. I had already changed into a spacesuit, and uh, I was just kind of waiting for things to happen. So I hear the the the, the gunfire, and uh, I immediately slam the broadcast message again. And I'm like, Roko, you said we could get to the replicator room and save our friend. Order your drones to stand down. And I don't even wait for a response. I start sprinting to uh, get to these guys, to get to my crew. And uh, right. as I'm leaving, I yell out, Rima, you've got the ship. She's gonna have a talking to you later, I'm sure about this. Um, go ahead, before you do anything else, just go ahead and give me a diplomacy check. Ooh. Twenty-two. You walked away, so you don't hear anything just yet. All right, Dimmy and Passenger, you guys are up at the same time. Okay, so looking into this room here, if I kind of peer around the corner, what is what are these large black things? These, okay, these large black things are big steel pillars. They're basically excellent cover. Um, you see some like desks and stuff. Uh, let me get a little pointer here. Some desks and stuff here. Some two open uh, containers that say uh, security on it. Um, crates over here at the top. More crates here. Big computers in front of this big window. Um, and then some stairs going up. Here's some like a platform with a little uh, pad right here on it. And these seem to be like server computers at the very, very top. And there's also some plants that Probably have like whatever. little auto, yeah, have some little uh, automatic sprinklers on them. Gotcha. All right. Well, I will use five, ten, fifteen, twenty feet of movement to move up here to the still peel to the still steel pillar. <laughs> the still pillar. It's very still. The still pillar. Um, and once I get there, I will fire 
I, I will pop out of cover long enough to take aim and fire my pistol at the 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 fella that's right there in front of me, the closest fella. All right, he's behind partial cover. All right, go ahead and roll. Okay. That is a low roll. That's an eleven to hit. You you hit the crate in front. You you dart up, you dart up, fire, and you pull back, and it definitely hits the crate. Okay. Demi. Demi will pitter patter his way on over here. How much movement uh, do you uh, have? There we go. I have forty feet of movement. So that uses thirty five of it. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll move one more so I can actually have an angle to shoot because otherwise I won't. Well, uh, you're you're like right on the corner. We can say okay. you can pop out and fire. Um, if you go one more, you'll be out of cover like Cryptus. Gotcha. Um, sorry, no sense outside the door. Um, let's see. So that so this is my first time actually playing. It's like Starfinder. Yeah, Starfinder on thing. So. That is my movement. Do I still get to do the attack action? You used your move action. You still have a standard action. Okay. A swift action, which is like the D&D bonus action. Um, and I believe that is it. You have your reaction, but you know what that is. Okay. He is going to... to an opening volley. <laughs> Or um, am I able to? Am I able to? Uh, see, I don't, that might not be a standard. Opening volley basically allows you to get a bonus to your melee next, and I don't even know if you can even get to him. Um, I'll just do a normal attack with uh, um, a hand coil. R royal or er, roll? Hand coil. Royal. Hand, hand royal roll. Hand royal. Royal your dice, sir. Uh. Let's see. Okay. A modifier. Ranged attack modifier is four. Okay. That is a 13 to shoot at um, this guy. 13, it ducks behind cover and it hits the crate in front of it. Okay. The loud rifle goes off again. Against Cryptus, who is out of cover. Natural 20. Yes, that hits. <laughs> um, what does Starfinder do for net 20s? Is it just Guaranteed hit or a crit confirm is some Spizo's thing. I don't know the rules for crit confirming. I think you have well, to for like now. All right, since I'm also unfamiliar with crit confirm, I'm just going to count it as a hit, not like a bone crushing thing that I used to do for D&D. I want to read up on the crit confirm because I'm not familiar with it. But for now, just to keep things moving along, it is just a guaranteed hit. I've got the rules for crit here if you want them now. Sure. If your attack roll is a natural 20 and your attack total is equal to or greater than your target's AC, your attack is a critical hit. A critical hit means that you roll your damage twice, adding to each roll all of your usual bonuses, including any additional damage from special abilities, and then you add the rolls together to determine the damage dealt. Some weapons will have additional critical effects that applies when you score a critical hit. These effects are as follows. So if your weapon has something special, let me know when there's a chart here. I can find it. So I roll 4d10, is what you're saying. Yep. Take 38 damage, sir. I'm down. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I take it back. I didn't give you those rules. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Same thing. Also apparently, also, apparently I wouldn't have been in range to shoot. Why? Uh, my weapon only has a range of 40. Really? Interesting. So I would not have been able to shoot. Very interesting. Did not know that. All right. 
so uh, Cryptus is now on the ground. Um, if someone could pull up the resolve and rules for that. As I move us along to Cryptus. Shit, now I gotta I'll look him up. So if you're dying and you have enough resolve points, you can spend a number of resolve points equal to one quarter of your maximum health on your turn to immediately stabilize. So my health is 22, so a quarter of that is what? I'll say five, rounding down. I think I only, you only start with like three. You start with as many as uh, you have the modifier in your prime stat. So if you are maxed out on like if you have 20 strength, you can ah. do it. I see. So it's minimum 1 RP or maximum 3 RP for this on your turn to immediately stabilize. So... Hold on. Is that equal to 1? Ah, okay, I see. So I'll spend 1 resolve point, and that stabilizes me. It means I'm no longer dying, but I'm unconscious. All right. And then, so then I can... Next turn, I can do something. Gotcha. And the guy with this rifle is the one that's sitting further back, by the way. All right. Now the one that's up close, um, you see he begins to reload. And then as his move action, I believe it's reload as move action. And then he sets the rail cannon up and he will fire at the two of you with the automatic. First one is against uh, Passenger. Second one was against Demi. And I think you both have cover. I don't think that hits either of you. And I screwed up the second roll. The second yeah. roll should be 11. Total cover. If the enemy doesn't have a line of sight of you, you have total cover. If the enemy a creature can't... You don't have total cover. He, can, he knows where you're at. <laughs> and he has some line of sight. You would have the uh, better cover, I believe. The improved cover, so it's plus four. All right. Mm, okay. I believe that's the end of the round. Captain Jin, you're up. He didn't even okay. roll high enough to hit you normally, I don't think, so. As you, Captain Jin, as you're running down, you hear this loud thud, and then this rhythmic boom, 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 boom. You definitely hear an automatic weapon up there. I run forward uh, my full movement because uh, I only have 30 feet of movement. And I see Cryptus on the ground. I'm like, Cryptus, no! Damn you, Roko. And uh, because I'm not familiar with Starfinder's rules, I have no freaking idea what I can do. Well, you used your move action. You have a standard action and a swift action. All right, let's see. Actions in combat. You could do a coup de grace on Cryptus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't see anything in the full actions list or the standard actions list for healing. Oh, no. Because I assume that's what I, you're trying to do. You could, have, you could have stabilized me, but I'm not sure there's much else you can do. I was going to say, if you have any, like, uh, potion equivalents. Um, you might be able to use some one of those. Uh, I guess if I could um, uh, retcon my normal movement, uh, just because I want to do the run full action, That's so I fine. can move up to four times my speed. Um, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, so I'll just. I'll kind of run past the door, past uh, Cryptus, and, and run up against the door on the other side. I'll look down at Crispus, and I'll be like, stay with me, buddy. And that's it for me. All right. Demi, passenger, you guys are up. Um, it, having moved into this room and kind of kind of looked around a bit, can I, are, are these more like droids, or are these... People like what? What are we fighting here? You're fighting what looks like to be uh, these security robots. Security robots. Okay. Yep. They have like a big red eye. They're like they're actually not that beefy as the icon I use. They're kind of thin. Um, 
their arms are a little bit thicker than they just kind of heavily armored they're pretty decent security droids not like what you fought with the uh, officer crook okay 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 um all right i'm going to cast a spell i'm going to cast grease underneath the the closest security robot it's 50 feet out. Yeah, I'm trying to see where the range is listed. Oh, okay, it's 25 feet, so I'd have to move... Where would I have to move? I'd have to move, like, there. Ooh, one shot took out our beefiest feller. Uh, it was a crit, to be fair. I guess that's true, but... okay. And it was the second shot. Okay. It took 55 damage. New plan... Because uh, I am not going to expose myself to that kind of gunfire. Um, I am going to cast um, as a full action. Let me make sure I got this right because I thought there was a spell related to full action. Maybe not though. Okay. Yeah. So as a, I'm just as a standard action, I'm going to cast a spell. I'm going to cast magic missile. I'm going to send both bolts um, at the nearest security guard. Um, the they strike unerringly. They deal one d four force damage. One d four plus one. Roll away. Uh, they both are going to do three damage each. So six damage to the closest to the closest person. And then you kind of throw your hand out and feed these two uh, darts jettison out and you see it kind of blast off pieces of the uh, the shell and it just and it kind of like reels back and has to like get back into cover. Okay, okay, okay. Now is there part of my move action? Let's see here. crawl. I thought you did. No, no, no the, the, it was just a standard action to cast this. Oh, one. I thought you said full action. No, I, I thought there was a way you could cast the spells a full action and give it some sort of a bonus, but I'm I'm just wrong. Um, I don't see. Mm. Oh, as my move action, I can manipulate an item. Moving or manipulating an item usually is usually a move action. This includes retrieving or putting away. While he's going over rules, Demi, it is your turn as well yeah. at the same time. Right. So, if I do a full action, I cannot move. Correct. You, you a full action is your standard action and your full action together. Okay. Because uh, I have your a serum of healing, but um, serums are vials of magic liquid that you can imbibe as a that you can imbibe as a standard action or carefully trickle down the throat of a helpless or unconscious creature as a full action all right well i will i do vaguely remember a rule that's going to help you out here um if you use a full action there's actions called like non-actions and one of them is you can take a single step basically so okay. you can move five feet and still do that. Um, okay. Just understand where you will be, because you can't move back. Right. Um, is it actually? Hmm. Yeah, uh, what are the you'll be out of cover. What are the rulings on like dragging? Strength check. That's that's more of a DM thing. In, as far as I know, and it, you'd have well, you'd have to drag all of his bulk, but this is a low gravity area, so your carrying capacity is like tripled. So, for the sake of time, I'll say that you can probably drag him pretty easily. Okay, then I would be try. I would try and grab Cryptus and drag him back ten feet uh, this way. As your move action? As uh, yes. All right, it's actually... Um, go ahead and make an athletics check for me. Cryptus, um, what's your bulk total? Uh, I'm 
Uh, Bulk seven. All right. Fourteen. All right. It's a struggle, but because of the low gravity, this little tiny (laughs) two-foot-tall chicken (laughs) is able to kind of get a little hot. I kind of have to do like a little drag. Like kind of like yeah get the you're trying to lift them and then pull them you're trying yeah. to like throw them in the air and then pull them a bit it, it takes time but you're able to pull him back and um i can't do it because i presume but i'm gonna like take out the vial of of healing potion at least and like just so, like, so why it. can't you do it it's a full action yeah, that's to... a full action to heal something that's unconscious gotcha so next round basically you'll be able to do it yeah, and I'll kind of motion to Caption Jin that like I have it. Okay, and I can I can heal him. <laughs> and to finish up my turn, I'm just going to step five steps to the right and assume that this puts me into full cover from both of the them. machine gun. Yeah, from both of them. There's mm. a large steel pillar, a still steel pillar between the two of us. All right, so you're basically dunk, ducking down and trying to get as much cover as possible. Yes, with All right. the big fancy steel pillar. Gotcha. Uh, and that makes Rifleman go next. Um, he can't see anyone right now, so he will ready in action. Cryptus, is there anything you got to do? Yes. So... Cryptus, as Bimmy drags Cryptus and he's got the health syringe ready to go, Cryptus suddenly just bolts upward like he wakes up and he's using a resolve point to gain one HP back. That's all it lets you do. And so You're getting Cryptus, hazard pay, buddy. <laughs> so Cryptus wakes up and Dimmy immediately hears him muttering to himself, I'm never using percussive maintenance on the ship again. That sucked. <laughs> And now I can take my full action, so I'm going to stand up, and I am not going back out to get shot. So, I am actually, <laughs> I'm going to move back a little bit. Is it possible for him to take the syringe from me and to use it? I, I actually have a syringe too, so I think I will let you keep yours and stab myself with my syringe. Okay. <laughs> you see him just... Debt j- jab it into him. All right. Serum healing. Goodbye. The rail. Um, I think. Does he have a shot? Uh, no, not really. Okay, so he will also ready in action. Captain Jin. All right. Um, this is Jin's first time here, so. When he's like peeking around the corner, what does he see? Um, All right. So, so the black one? areas are big steel pillars. The red okay. outlined area is a big window to where you can see the ship and everything. Um, you see the computers. You see the crates. You see basically this guy here is the one that is uh, with the automatic weapon and the one up here is the one with the rifle this is kind of like a lift area over here you see like a bunch of servers and over here you see two boxes labeled security that are opened um you said rifle and automatic uh which one has the big gun that was like blowing away this is this guy this is the one with the big rifle that's kind of like okay thud you know I just need to... I couldn't find these rules for myself. Um, my only gun has... It says it has a range of 30 feet, but apparently you can shoot beyond that range. Do you know what those rules are? I do not. I will have to look at them later, but for the sake of time, okay. we'll just let you fire and all that. Well, like we let Demi sake, fire. For the sake of time, do we want to just call it here since it's 1030? <laughs> well, if that's what you guys want to do, I think I have something in mind to end it and then we can end it there. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to do things more complicated than just shooting, so I think we should end it here. It is all right. Have dreaded work. All right. We will end it here. Thank you guys so much. And uh, did we ever find out if we are 
playing as Kazir next weekend. We are. We are playing as Kazir next weekend. Uh, but there's also a couple of things going on next weekend. Um, there is a one shot happening next weekend that we are doing with um, with Dono the Cleric, one of my very good friends. Uh, I'll be participating with his one shot. We're doing a giveaway that day. We're, we're going to be giving away uh, three different items. Uh, we're going to be giving away a t-shirt at the end of the one shot, which starts at 11 a.m. Um, Eastern time. We'll be At the end of that one, we'll be doing the t-shirt giveaway. At the break of Azkazir, we'll be doing a fancy dice box giveaway that's um, created by our very own cast members for the Azkazir game, uh, Greg and Megan. And at the end of that episode, we'll be doing another t-shirt giveaway. Um, so a lot of really neat stuff going on in collaboration with um, some really good friends of ours um, on Sunday the 8th. All of that starts at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to do some quick math for everybody. But as far as the stream is concerned, good night, everybody. Good. Yeah, I hope you had a wonderful watching. Halloween. We, had, um, we, got, we had a new subscriber. We had, we had someone tipped us. Um, we got 100 bits. I don't know what that converts out to, but thank you all so very much. We really do appreciate it. You can, uh, the best way to support us is by uh, reviewing us on Podchaser for our podcast, uh, by telling your friends. These are all things you could do totally for free. Uh, you can also go to our Patreon and support us there, and that's obviously a monetary way to support us, but it helps us uh, afford upgrades for our, our stream and helps us all um, do this more. Uh, so we really appreciate all of you, and that's it. Thanks, thanks for being here and enjoying the show with us. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. This has been another episode of Starfinder on the Into the Dungeon Network. Thank you so very much for being here. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and tell your friends. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.